I ask my congregation in Amherst a question about this year. It's based on me asking myself a question recently, and that was, if it were your home going time tomorrow, if you should die tomorrow, how would you say you have lived your year? If this is all you get of the year 2023, and you took your last breath, right before you took the last breath and examined inside, how would you say you have lived this year? That sponsored me being willing to ask the question of my congregations. Question about your predominant state of inner being. What has it been this year? Just for you to take notice. It's not where you will be stuck being, but to acknowledge what has been my predominant inner state of being this year of our Lord, 2023. Just for you to know what it has been for you. There's no good or bad or right or wrong. There are no, if this is what it's been, I get an F. And if this is what I it's been, I get an A plus and a gold star. It's just, what has it been? Because you live in your inner state of being, not at your street address. Has your personal, individual, predominant inner state of being this year been happy, sad, secure, afraid, excited, bored, energized, exhausted, peaceful? Agitated, hopeful, skeptical, blissed, depressed, at peace, angry, hopeful, hopeless. These are choices in the realm of polarity. These indicate the differences in experiences in this realm of opposites. What has been your predominant, primary inner state of being this year? Just acknowledge what it has been. If it's where you want to be, stay there and dig in. If it is not where you want to be, do not be discouraged because each moment offers you an opportunity to recreate yourself anew. You are in charge of your inner state of being. The universe is conspiring to bless you. God is here, present in you, expressing itself as you. What is your deepest heart's desire? More God? I hope so. My theme today would be 
from A Course in Miracles. I have given everything I see the meaning that it has for me. Take that in. So speaks Yeshua to you. You have given everything you see the meaning that it has for you. This statement is prefaced by a teaching that we live in a meaningless world and we give it the meaning we put upon it. This is what I see and this is what I tell myself about what I see. This is how we live. The ego has an intended function. The ego being the personality or who you seem to think you are apart from God's creation of who you really are. The ego is the story we tell ourselves it's about who I am and about what is. The intention was that the ego personality would scan the surround and collect data, and then to report to the Holy Spirit within us the data that it has noticed, and to ask the Holy Spirit, what do you have to say about this? What do you make of it? Well, what they have called the fall of humanity indicates that moment where the ego decided upon itself, I am in charge of my universe and I am in charge of my life. And there is no need for me to report to the Holy Spirit and ask its interpretations of the data I am witnessing. I will interpret the data myself. And so we as personalities scan our surround and notice the data and without reporting to the Holy Spirit, we ourselves and I make up what everything means. We give meaning to the data based on the ego's belief that we are living in a world of separation and a world of division. When we report to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit reminds us not to perceive that what the data speaks is a good reason for us to believe that separation and division are the reality. They are always and forever just an appearance, always an illusion made up in our own minds. This is what I see. This is what I hear. This is what I read. And this is what I tell myself about it. Oh, we have opportunities to make up some very, very, very separate and divisive interpretations of the world we see. That is actually a blank slate. We live in a meaningless world that we give meaning to. All of us know of just a one-line lyric from a song that declares, what a wonderful world. It shows me what is possible for me. 
when I look at the surround in a gravelly voice, a trumpet player sings a song for Carlos Wayne Anderson. One line stays with me forever. It's about this is what I see. And it's also about this is what I tell myself about what I see. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? What they're really saying is, I love you. And I say to myself, what a wonderful world. Again, this is what I see. And this is the meaning I give to what I see. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? What they're really saying because I love you. And I say to myself, what a wonderful world. Once more, to fulfill the law of three. A simple, simple example of what is possible for me this is what I see. And this is what I tell myself about what I see. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do what they're really saying? is I love you. And I say to myself, what a wonderful world. I give everything I see. the meaning that it has for me. Without reporting to the Holy Spirit to guide me in interpreting what I witness in the surround, I will always see division and separation in my surround and in my inner core. But when I do report all the data I intake to the Holy Spirit, I see oneness and unity growing and spreading Let me choose to see with the vision of Christ within me. My plan is that none of us dies tomorrow to have only been left with the inner experience and the inner state of being that has been our predominant one so far this year. I pray that we upgrade 
The sky is the limit. There is no ceiling. You did a burning bowl. And you were asked to bring to that ceremony so beautifully and wonderfully facilitated by our good reverend. You were asked to bring the fullness of your faith to the spirit possibility that you could decide who you don't want to be anymore, what loads you don't want to carry anymore, what rocks you are ready to drop to enter into a new you on a new year. You were asked to bring full faith that a simple ritual of fire could transmute, transmute your anxiety into excitement. your depression into bliss. Jesus has reminded us, you cannot achieve this transformation in any lackadaisical fashion. You can't get it by half-stepping. You can't get it by connecting with your creator only when you are gathered on a Zoom with your spiritual community. No way, Jose. It's a 24-7 piece of work. Work while it is day. Work while you live, not on anyone in the surround. Work on you. You are your project. I want you to know that this spiritual community is in a state and has been for a short while now of being at jeopardy because of its intake of finances, how they have dropped. This conversation about how we can have longevity at a church. I wasn't aware until recently, until toward the end of the year, of the state of things financially for unity in the city. And once I heard, I immediately told Raleigh in his role with the church to immediately cut what I am paid by at least 42%. Because I want to be here in this ministry, in this community, with this family. And if I had not known, I could have done nothing about it. Not a doggone thing. Because I didn't know. And maybe you don't know that our gifts of tithes and offerings have dropped to a point where it has become impossible. impossible for the church to go on with all of the things that need to be taken care of financially and the individuals on the ministry team who the church is paying. I did immediately what God told me to do. I know how I can help.
I can insist on a 42% drop in what you give me so we can carry on. I do not want this church to go belly up for us to discover in December or next January that we simply can't go on. And when it occurred to me that I was only able to do something because I was aware of my opportunity to do something that I thought of each of you. If you don't know, there's nothing you're led to do. And I knew today, in my first time with you, in the year of our Lord, 2023, hallelujah, thank you, God, I'm still here. Ask in your heart what you might do. And then do what your heart tells you to. I've given you data. Please take that data inside to the Holy Spirit and ask a simple question. What would you have of me? Cheerfully we have received. Cheerfully let us give. God is working in this place. Can you feel it? There is no danger. Only opportunity. Opportunity gets my motor going. Opportunity gets me excited. Opportunity makes me feel like a kid again. Like all things are possible. No danger. Opportunity. Thank you, God, for unity in the city. Brookline, Massachusetts. And hold Brother Raleigh in the light. You are able to participate in this ministry. Together every Sunday, much due to Brother Raleigh. And his plate is overwhelmed. Take that data inside to the Holy Spirit and ask, what would you have of me? This church is a village. Let us participate in the continuance of this opportunity to be unity in the city. No danger. Opportunity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love an opportunity to do and be more. It gets my motor going. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yay, God. Thank you, God, for everything. I have no complaints whatsoever. Thank you, God, for everything. I have no complaints whatsoever. Thank you, God, for everything. I have no complaints. Hallelujah. 
Not a one, nary a one. Whatsoever. God is here. Working in this place. Even when we can't see it, God's working. Even when we can't feel it, God's working. God never stops. God never stops working. I give praise to the one who has brought you out of darkness and into its marvelous light. Time and time and time again. Just got to give a final hallelujah. Shalom, salam, salam, amen.